All right, I'm going to finish this dress and everything and just hope that it fits my sister when I get back. Anyway, in my last live stream, we discussed some basic Shadow Knight lore, and this lore will come into play big time in the next couple of arcs, so let's get to wrapping this one up. Spoilers for Minecraft Diaries, by the way. So, one of my reasons for choosing that topic for the last live stream is because I think that this whole section marks how the roleplay and world building of this series starts to get more ambitious, while remaining endearingly ghetto, I guess. Like, okay, we start with Athmau emerging on the other side of the portal after following Xenix out of the nether, but the wolf village, in those short moments she was gone, had been engulfed in flames. So Athmau, now turning off her let's player switch and turning on her role player switch, begins to panic and instinctively tries to put the flames out. So I don't really have a way to know whether her trying to put out the flames was planned or improvised by Jess as a way of enriching her character, but either way it goes horribly. <laughs> like I don't know if the fire was glitched or if there was something wrong with her water bucket, but bro she tried to place water down and all it did was break a single block of fire and then just stay there in that one block radius. And you already know Jess was like, yo, what's going on here? But I respect her because she had to go with it because she was roleplaying. Like, she tried a few more times, but then just put the rest out with using her fist because the water bucket was literally slowing her down at this point. And this whole time, she was remaining all solemn and panicked and trying to fill the air with dialogue while she might have been crying with laughter on the inside from the bucket fail as much as I was. Anyway, if that wasn't dramatic enough, at some point during that chaos, she approaches the rest of the wolf tribe to return the wolf cup she he'd save from the nether. The whole tribe is huddled in the Alpha's cave where the flames hadn't touched because of its stone infrastructure. The wolves are highly aggravated, but none as much as the Alpha Boldolf, who tells Athmel that they'd seen a masked man and two accomplices do this to their village. One with hair white as snow and another with eyes like the ocean, he describes them. Yes, the gray and blue shadows. So Bodolf is pressed because he believes that they must have been rebels from Brightport, but Athmau recognizes that his description of the Max Man matches what the werewolf cub Kiva told her, meaning that they must have stolen the Lord of Brightport from the Nether. Bodolf is like you right and tells Athmau which direction they went in and decides not to take action against Brightport until he has proof. Meanwhile, his wife Kira is concerned by his state of anger, and his son Loel is just happy that Kiva is home. During these interactions, Athmau learns that the wolf tribe intend to let nature take its course and rebuild rather than stop the fire. And of course she's not cool with that, so she goes back out with her useless behind water bucket as if it's gonna work any better this time. Child, anyway, so she finally gets on track and goes in the direction Bodolf told her. She finds like this splotch of blood on the ground which is deeply upsetting but also a convenient lead. She realizes that it's a trail and starts following it but then she gets sidetracked again. This time she just gets distracted by animals and starts BSing and at this point the thought initially begins to form for me of... This early series BSing might reflect poorly on her character. <laughs> Hear me out. I'm probably gonna like expand on this more later, but like over the course of the series, Minecraft Diaries goes from being more let's play with some roleplay elements to being more roleplay with some let's play elements to being full roleplay with some gameplay and no let's play. That means that somewhere down the line, Athmau fully stops being an avatar in a survival world and completely becomes a character. So like in the context of Athmau being a fully realized character whom other characters do nothing but praise, when you come back here to the early episode to see Jessica Bravura BSing, you're all like, yo, who are you and what are you doing? But like, you have to draw such a thick mental line between the two in order to not think about why other characters never acknowledge her chaotic lifestyle and it's so troubling to me, but this, this is peak entertainment. I love this. Anyway. Athmau eventually gets back on track and follows the trail of blood, only to pretend for too long not to see the most poorly hidden hideout ever hit out, and I'm like, it's no way she didn't know it was there. But it's also hard to tell because her roleplaying voice and let's player voice are identical at this stage. Anyway, she enters the hideout and it opens out into the stone room wherein she immediately gets rocked. By who? By Xenix who attacks her on sight. She manages to overpower him for a moment, but then the green shadow appears and takes Xenix away in a cloud of smoke. Athmount notices that the stone room is actually two rooms, and in the other room she finds the Lord of Brightport, behind iron bars. So here we get to see some of what I mentioned earlier about the ambition incline going on here. We enter a cutscene. This cutscene is just a conversation, but I think that it well demonstrates how they're advancing their roleplay elements with more voice-acted dialogue. 
This is where Keston, the voice actor of everyone, joins the mix to add a bit more variety to the cast of, at this point, Jessica, Will, and occasional chat bubbles? This series has also always had an affinity for world building, but this conversation is the one that finally affords the viewer some more much needed context on the main antagonist of the series, the Shadow King and his Shadow Knights. This clearly marks an incline in the direction the series is about to go with the storytelling, and I'm here for it. The conversation ends with the Lord of Brightport telling Aphmau that he can't heal Garth because his healing magics were stolen through a magic crystal by Xenix. So Aphmau takes him back home and he offers her a healing potion instead. She rushes back to her village, Phoenix Drop, and goes to Garth. The healing potion works quickly. He opens his eyes and becomes responsive, which is reason to rejoice, up until the realization that Aphmau has news about Xenix that Garth will not want to hear.